Easy, I'm Scepter and you're tuned into another Ableton Live tutorial. In today's lesson, we're gonna be looking at making a rolling style bass line that has a riff that kind of glides around. We're gonna add some percussive elements and then also look at some mid-range layers that we can add to keep it interesting throughout the track. So we're already inside Ableton Live, so as always, I'll pay you through the track first. So first things first, uh, we'll have a quick look at a serum patch that you could start with. Now, just to show you the main uh, bass line in it. So there's only one variation in it really. And then uh, there's a mid-range, which is exactly the same uh, sample and the same uh, riff. And then the last kind of percussive element that's in it. Cool. So we'll start off with the uh, serum patch and then kind of go from there. So I've just created, uh, it's a patch I made ages ago, uh, but it's just a sub, there's nothing really special about it. I don't know if you can hear that on the headphones. Um, which is an inverted sine and a sine wave. No crazy modulation going on, a very harsh low pass uh, filter really only letting through the sub frequencies, which is all I wanted. Um, I'll give this patch away uh, in the description as well. Uh, most of these effects, as you can see, aren't actually doing anything. They were just going on at the time to kind of, as I was developing the sound into something that I wanted to keep. So yeah, you get rid of all of those. So it's only another another EQ and another, well, the low pass filter isn't even doing anything. So yeah, not a lot, kind of weird actually. Um, but there we go. So kind of the, the step from there was to resample that into audio. And the reason I, I know I've mentioned before why I was working audio, but the reason now is I'm creating sample packs, uh, which will be available to you 
uh, in the coming weeks. So these sorts of things are, I find it easier nowadays to just put things into a sampler. You know that it's going to sound the same every time compared to if you've accidentally nudged one of the controls in your synth and then you spend a while trying to get it back if you haven't saved it. So that's the main reason why. Uh, thermal, I had as a, as a distortion afterwards, which I'm not even using. Uh, utility, just to put the gain up a little bit because the uh, sampler always turns it down. Nothing going on in the sampler in terms of modulation either. It's all just in the patch really. One of the important things I'd say um, about subs is having some sort of movement in your sub uh, from the outset really so even if it's just a little bit of oscillation or you know phase movement between the two oscillators that you're using just to create a little bit more interest you know a static straight sub is cool but it's a bit more of a harsher impactful style whereas that wasn't re really what I wanted with this um, so yeah so the only thing uh, happening on the channel is this automation for the noise uh, which actually isn't actually automated I think it is or it was at certain points uh, when I wrote the track um, the mid-range layer that goes along the top which I'll just play solo together So you can see, uh, I mean, you can hear that uh, the notes that I've used do have breaks in them, but they're always on the one. So it doesn't really matter that the sub is breaking up a little bit or the mid range is breaking up because when the drums are playing, you can't hear it anyway. Um, in terms of choice of distortion for the mid range layer, um, Splice do thermal now on rent to own output plugins, really, really good. Um, and there's loads of inspiration inside there. It comes with loads of presets and you can edit each one of the patches as well to create modulation within the actual distortion itself, which is pretty cool. Um, with mid-range ones, I always tend to go quite wide, uh, not, not so wide that when you collapse it to mono, you know, you're going to lose it all. Actually, let's just listen to this in mono and see how much we, how much we lose. I say that and it could be a lot. So as you can hear, it's obviously very narrow in comparison, but you're still getting that same nasally um, mid-range tone from it. Sometimes if it is split too wide, when it does collapse, um, the phase relationship when it's collapsed uh, can change the tone of the distortion itself. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, I've used chorus to generate some stereo image uh, as well. Really pushing the highs on it. Um, cutting the low where the sub would be just so when I layer it with the undistorted layer we're not having any problems but then it's not a really critical cut where I've cut one at 100 hertz and you know that's what the crossover frequency is exactly it's not really that style of tune where it has to be really clinical um, in terms of mix down um, utility as I say just to boost the gain another pro cue with high cut a bit higher this time and a bump in the high mids chorus a uh, little plate adding some reverb by sound toys i uh, haven't even used the the low cut in this but i should think afterwards okay that's kind of strange okay weird weird signal path really but doesn't really matter how you get there, I suppose. It's what you have in the end. So just trimming the highs off, so I've now focused the sound uh, just in the mid range. So without without that, okay. So yeah, it's very kind of crackly um, top, which I've got rid of, just to smooth it out a little bit. So together. Uh, 
Um, and in context of the tune, the middle, uh, the mid range layer isn't massively loud. But it's, as I say, just enough to generate some extra interest and variation for that 16 bars and the second 16. And there's nothing, nothing after that. Uh, this serum here isn't doing anything. Uh, it was, this is an old project, project which I've gone back to. Um, so some of the things don't really work. Uh, so just get rid of that. Uh, yeah, this percussive um, style section. The inspiration for this was from a Jer and Stone track. Uh, Blocks and Escher did a remix of it ages ago, uh, a good few years ago. Um, and it has a really percussive style bass line in it. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I've always liked that sort of thing. And it's, it's been something that actually took me a while to get my head around. There's a couple of key points in it for me. One is odd numbers seem to work better uh, than, than even ones. And also it's not sat on the grid in terms of, uh, you know, as 16th notes or as eighth notes, it's almost staggered, uh, staggered ahead, um, to give it the sound that it does have. Hopefully that makes sense, but I, I don't really know how to explain it any better than that. Um, without the filter on it, it's quite a harsh sound. Uh, really taking a lot of it away um, before I've even put the auto filter on it. So without it, very aggressive. A utility afterwards boosting the gain because the auto filter, unless you add a resonant resonant peak to it, which I didn't really want, I didn't want a resonant scoop going down it, um, you can take quite a lot of the volume away. So that's all I'm adding uh, with that utility. And then a reverb after that, none of the effects before, as I say, I would have put them on to kind of test where I wanted to go. And then that's where the variation in the main baseline comes in. So I've added this uh, high F just before the second bar of the baseline groove, uh, just to give you a little bit of call and response between those hits and then a high note. Uh, and then the last bit really is just t a turnaround mid-range bass, which, uh, why can't I see it? Um, which really, you know, th these kind of basses are well available in sample packs. The, the DLR uh, bad boy bass one is really good, um, but, that work it it doesn't really matter um in terms of the the movement of your bass it's the tone that you're looking for if you were to build a patch similar to this you you want to create as much movement in it as you can and then draw yourself a note in uh, like i've done here it's just an f so i know it's going to be on the right in the right key and then you can change the modulation that happens to fit once you've got your note in. Um, a lot, since I was teaching the lessons that I advertised, I don't know, about six months ago now, a lot of the people, a lot of the students that I had were trying to create a modulation shape and then try and get that to fit. Whereas for for me anyway, that's a much more difficult way of doing it. It's, it's much easier to create a straight note and then create um, the shape of modulation that you'd like to fit your track. Otherwise, work in that way. Any patch that you make, it's only going to really fit one style of uh, drum break. If you start moving kicks and stuff around or the snares around, it will all of a sudden kind of be out of time with it. So if you work the other way around of working from nothing but a good tone, 
and then adding your shapes inwards you might find it a little bit easier that way so they're just happening um, almost every eight bars not in the beginning um, just to give you the turnaround at the end of the uh, end of the sections So it's two versions of it, um, one with a different movement. And then in the last section, it's really pushed by uh, something that happens in the pads becomes a lead rather than uh, the track being driven by the bass line anymore, although it is still relevant. In terms of the variation in the second drop which I know some people struggle with a thing really to look at is your arrangement in the first place um, when how much you've given away uh, before you get there if you have given it all the way in terms of you know all of your sounds and everything that you really want to use in your track do try and stay away from adding more just for the sake of it because you've run out of ideas because you'll lose uh, the kind of minimal vibe or continuity within the sound anyway. So w with, with your arrangement, it's it's kind of best to be as restrained as you can within the first drop, but, you know, keeping it interesting and also it feeling like it's dropped still um, and you're not just having a real chilled one for the first half, but then that's cool as well. Um, but then what I always do is for this third 16, I will introduce something that I <clears throat> want to use for the second drop in this this case was those mid-range hits um, just to give a boost of energy halfway through my first drop and then I'll take it away after 16 so it's just like a little teaser but there's a higher level of energy in this section then once the tune's dropped out again when it comes back um, I introduce that that part again with a slight variation. In this case, I, I don't think there is any variation, but the tune isn't really finished. Uh, okay, so there's also the extra pad, pad section uh, in there. I'll just copy those over because the automation is slightly different. And then any shakers that you might have uh, going on, you want to make sure that they're present so you've got as much energy as possible um, in the second, second drop as well. So I'll probably copy that over. If they all work together, I'm not really sure yet. a bit intense uh, in this case I'd probably work to get some of the stuff out of there um, another thing that you could do is change what was happening in the auto filter so could try it the other way doesn't sound bad you could definitely use that it doesn't need to be something that you know, 
really changes the vibe of your tune. If anything, you want it to be subtle differences. So overall, the track sounds different, but it doesn't look like you've tried to cram too many ideas into there. I could even use this mid-range layer. I wouldn't really want it the same volume, so bring that back. Um, you could also try a different um, tone in that distortion. Bit weird. keep these sections um, also keep the same level more or less the same level of intensity for the second 32 um, oh sorry the second 16 of the second drop so this pad section is dropped away but we've still got mid-range we've still got the uh, mid-range hits as well by doing that the third 16 is then different to what the first one is and your tunes getting a feeling of kind of dropping away and winding down uh, towards the end so yeah hopefully that was somewhat insightful in that kind of style it's not usually uh, what I do so I thought I'd do a video on it um, I did want to say thanks very much for the kind comments in terms of me not doing a video for a while I'm coming back that's really nice I'm glad you enjoy it um, as I say, the Serum pe preset will be available in the description. In a couple of weeks, my website will be live and there'll be sample packs and stuff that you can get from there as well. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you again soon.